Hello friends, good morning, happy Monday to you. It's the start of another week. It's mid-July, it's 2020, the weather's starting to heat up and so apparently is the COVID virus that is still among us. But we have this time to encourage each other. So why don't you grab a, an iced tea and grab your Bible and uh, let's be the church together. You know, as regular as clockwork, every three or four days, I get somebody who sends to me uh, uh, an email or a message, or I see it on Facebook that just says some variation of Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the plans that I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for harm, plans to give you a future with hope. And um, and those are encouraging words for anyone to read. But I. I often kind of smile a little bit when I see how they have been taken out of context by so many people. Those words of prophecy from Jeremiah. So I want to read to you the uh, the immediate verses right before verse 11 and then verse 11 itself. So we're going to start in Jeremiah 29, verse 4. And, uh, and you're going to hear a little bit of a different context for that scripture that is so hopeful for so many people. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce, and take wives and have sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters, and multiply there, and do not decrease." But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you. Do not let listen to the dreams that they dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I didn't send them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, and to give you a future with hope. And then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. And when you search for me, you will find me if you seek me with all your hearts. Well, that's a different word when you hear it in its context. What Jeremiah was saying to the people of Israel who were in exile in Babylon is that it was going to be a full 70 years before they would get to go home to Jerusalem. Now, I don't know about you, but thinking about that now as a 60-year-old, and I'm thinking 70 years from now, uh, this body isn't going to be here to go home to anything. So what's the word of God for those who are in exile and, and are going to time out before they can get back? Well, it's a very powerful word, actually. I want you to seek the welfare of the city that I've put you in. I sent you into exile, says the Lord, and you're not coming home. You're not going back. So begin the process of building a life for yourself there. Find good jobs. Build homes. Find wives for yourself and for your sons and for your daughters. Find husbands and then get them married off too and set up the process of being a generation that's living in exile. And if you seek the welfare of the place that I have sent you, you're going to find that that's where your welfare is hiding too. Isn't that just like God? Now, taking the long view, I want to say that this is uh, something that Paul discovered five to six hundred years later as he was preaching the gospel all throughout the Mesopotamia and the, and the ancient uh, Middle East. He, um, he began to say in his letter to the Romans that I know that God is at work in every circumstance to bring about good for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. What Paul was discovering is that... Uh, 
the outward circumstances of our life can't dictate whether or not we can be faithful to God. It comes swelling up from within, like a wellspring of water, as Jesus had promised. This is remarkable because the the strategy that Paul used to bring the mission of Christ out into the world beyond Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria was to go to synagogues that were planted all through uh, the Middle East, all through Asia Minor. And those synagogues were placed there by people who were sent into exile 500 years before the time of Christ. Because those people listened to the Lord and they sought the welfare of the city where they were placed, and they built synagogues in those places and established a witness for God's people in those places, they lined up like stepping stones for Paul to take the missional word of Christ out into Asia Minor and to all the uttermost parts of the Roman Empire. God's providential hand had provided a means through the disastrous exile of his people into Babylon, provided a means for moving the message of Christ forward. Now I'm bringing all of this up because these are disappointing times for us in that we want to go to the sanctuary. We want to run to the places where we've always known God. And I, and I, I know that it's frustrating when the governor of our state says you got to stay back uh, in a scaled back mode of physical distancing and being careful and wearing masks. And it's, and you just start wondering, is it ever going to be like it was? And I think it's okay for us as Christians to say, even if it never goes back to the way it was, there's a faithful expression for us to be God's people together. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for destruction. Plans for a future with hope. And it may not look anything like what it looked like before we went into it this exile of pandemic, but I do know that it will be of God. And I knew, I know that it will redound to our children's children's children if we are faithful now in seeking the welfare of the city where God has sent us. He has moved us off campus. He has moved us out into the community. He's moved out, uh, moved us into our neighborhoods and our homes. And if we seek the welfare of those places, God will be with us. And we will find a new expression for uh, what it means to be a Christian in the year 2020. The mission of the church runs on with conviction and purpose because of the Holy Spirit's presence with us. So be of good courage on this Monday morning as we start thinking about coming out of our homes. Remember, we're probably not going to go back to the way it was, but we are going forward in Christ. Let that be our word for today. And let us be in prayer. Holy God, your ways are so much higher than our ways. Your thoughts are so much deeper than our thoughts, and your compassion is so much wider than our widest thoughts of compassion toward others. You see your whole creation, and we only see in part. You see all the generations, and we only see that slender moment in time when we are alive upon this earth. Oh God, open our eyes to your eternal perspective. Help us even now to see the seeds of a future that you are planting and help us be faithful in responding to it. For surely, God, there is nothing that you cannot accomplish and there's nothing that we cannot do if we are in alignment with your purpose and your wishes. Help us, God, to hear your call to us. Seek the welfare of the city where we are and help us, God, not to lament over our momentary exile, but to rejoice that you are with us even in these moments. We pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I do want to remind you as the weather heats up, you got to drink, drink, drink your water. Um, de being dehydrated causes all kinds of dizziness. And for some of us, it makes us feel lightheaded and then you faint and fall over and you don't want that. So um, make sure you drink your water. And above all else, Remember, wash your hands, read a psalm, and tell somebody that you love them. I'll see you tomorrow.